So we have seen that there's something special about aromatic compounds. They're very stable and thus they don't do many reactions. But we're going to look in this chapter at five important reactions that the benzenes do do, that they do occur. Now, if we simply just added bromine to a benzene, it is too stable. It would not want to react. But if we added a Lewis acid catalyst or something like that, we would replace one of the hydrogens on the benzene ring with a bromine. We would also form HBr as another product here. Um, and so this is called electrophilic aromatic substitution. So we need some sort of electrophile to kick this reaction to get it started. And we're substituting an aromatic hydrogen with a leaving group. Um, there are five different reactions, so I want to show you that. But before we do that, let's look at a general mechanism. We won't go over every mechanism, all five, but let's look at a general mechanism for electrophilic aromatic substitution. So when we add some sort of strong electrophile to a benzene compound, the pi cloud is willing to open up or to, to unlocalize, undelocalize, and it will react with that to form what we would call a resonance stabilized catalyst, or a resonance stabilized cation, not catalyst. And you'll see that there's resonance around the benzene ring. And sometimes there's even resonance around um, the substituents hanging off the benzene ring, including that, those. But in this case, we will have three resonance structures. You may have seen that this is called, let's see, where am I going now? This is going up here. This is called a sigma complex, and this is form. So, so this is this is stable. We've added the electrophile. We've broken up the arom aromatic ring. We've added the electrophile. And then, in this case, some sort of base. So when you have resonance structures, when you're continuing on in the mechanism, you can pick any one of the structures. Usually the first one is the easiest one to do. And so in the second part of this reaction, we're going to add... Um, a base, and it is going to remove a proton where the electrophile was added and re-aromatize the ring. So effectively, we, we remain, we keep the benzene ring, but we replace one of the hydrogens with the um, electrophile. So the first reaction we'll talk about is called halogenation. And as you can imagine, we're adding a halogen, usually a bromine or chlorine in this case is what we'll talk about. So we will have, we will always start with benzene and then we will add either chlorine or bromine, Cl2, and then our Lewis acid catalyst, AlCl3 in this case. And so you can probably imagine we're going to add a chlorine right here. Um, the other product, is essentially HCl and then the AlCl3 is a catalyst. You can also add bromine. Generally in that case we add FeBr3 as the catalyst to get that reaction to go. The second reaction that we'll talk about is sulfonation. We're adding a sulfonyl group and so once again we will start with benzene and we are going to add SO3. This is actually called fuming sulfuric acid. So if you take sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4, and dehydrate it, um, it really, really wants water back. And so it sort of forms a vapor above it. Um, and so if you remove H2O from sulfuric acid, you'll get SO3. Very strong um, Lewis acid catalyst. And you will end up, in this case, it's not actually a substitution, but you will end up forming benzene sulfonic acid and it's inserted. All right, the mechanism is a little interesting. We're not going to talk about that, but that's reaction number two. Reaction number three, or C, I believe I used letters at first, um, is nitration. So in this case, we will start with benzene once again, and we will add nitric acid, but also sulfuric acid. Um, and so if you look at the mechanism, this is sort of interesting. Why do we need two acids? One actually behaves as a base in this case, but you'll end up adding the nitro group. And if you remember from the previous chapter, we know how to reduce that nitro group into an amino group. So now we've got um, some steps in a synthesis going that, that we can use to our benefit. The fourth reaction that we will talk about is Friedel 
Crafts Alkylation, named after two scientists who developed this. And as you can imagine, we're adding an alkyl group. Now this one's complicated, it varies. There are some changes if it's primary versus tertiary. But generally speaking, if you have an alkyl halide, and once again, we use this AlCl3, the same catalyst we used when we added chlorine and did a chlorination. And in this case, rather than adding the chlorine, you'll be adding the R group. And as I said, there are some variations in this. And there can be a rearrangement, which could be a negative thing in this reaction. But for example, if we did ethyl chloride, I'll do a simple one as an example, um, you would end up adding the ethyl group. And once again, the other product would be the HCl. If we want to have that completely balanced. The fifth reaction that we want to talk about is also developed or was also developed by Friedel and Crafts. But in this case, it is an acylation. An acyl group is a group, is essentially an alkyl group, but it has a carbonyl. So this is an acyl group. So now we're adding a carbonyl directly to the benzene ring. So it's very similar to the alkylation, but now we would have an acyl compound, an acyl halide, acyl chloride in this case. Once again, the same catalyst. The mechanism is a little bit different. There's some resonance going on in there, but in this case, um, we are adding the acyl group. And make sure you add it with the carbonyl attached to the benzene ring and not the R group attached to the benzene ring. All right, now why would we need to do this? Well, you may need the, the carbonyl group. You may need to add that. But also, remember, we had some issues that there could be resonance going on with just an alkyl group when you form the cation. And to get around that, if you had a problem with resonance, um, you could form the acyl group and then do a Clemenson reduction. And I'll just put the, the reagents here, zinc, mercury, alloy, HCl, and heat. And then this is a reduction that you can do. Um, and this will get rid of the carbonyl. So if you needed a primary group to be added, and, resin and rearrangement was occurring and causing problems. If you needed a primary group, you could add the acyl group and then reduce it straight to the carbonyl.